Well, hello, everybody. I thought I would take a short look. So just so you know, I intend doing a lot more of these kind of um, pop up shorter videos in um, in addition to my longer, more regular new and full moon videos. Um, and I will do them, you know, as I have time <laughs> when when called to do so, um, etc. So I hope you'll enjoy them and subscribe to my videos below. Uh, so sorry, my channel, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, uh, leave me a comment. I love to know your thoughts. And today I thought I would look at um, King Charles III's coronation. Now, I must say astrologers have used different times and so on and so forth. I um, am using the time that the crown was placed on his head and they said, God save the king. And a lot of other um, astrologers that I respect have used that time too. So I'm going to take a look at the chart. And I will say as well, though, um, there's a lot of fear going around about this chart and and a lot of assumptions about the way the monarchy works. A lot of people are assuming he's going to abdicate. Well, you know, I'm, I can't say he won't, but I will say that as a British person, having grown up under the crown, um, you know, we, we did have the one abdication that brought us the queen, but it's not something they do. You know? mm. And that's not to say I'm a big monarchist or anything. It's just, you know, I've grown up with the rules and so on and so forth. I do, however, know that there is a um, a real kind of Republican movement. And I do believe that King Charles is a reformer. I've always, you know, had um, I've followed the royals, as you do. It's hard to avoid in the UK. And King Charles, or Duke of Edinburgh as he was back then, has always um, had this reforming streak to him. He um, is an organic um, gardener. He's he's a real um, a greenie, if you like. He used to be laughed at when I was young for talking to plants. I believe he fuels his vehicles with fuel made on his Duchy of Cornwall lands. I mean, yes, he has a ridiculous amount of money and things like that. So I'm not talking about um, supporting him, but he's ha always had this kind of reforming streak. He's also formed the Prince's Trust and the Duke of Edinburgh Award schemes, which have helped so many young people. And he's generally been a, a man of service, but he's also curmudgeonly and all those things. So first, I'm going to look at his natal chart. No, first, I'm going to look at the actual coronation chart, the day of the coronation. Now, many people are, or, and astrologers are going, why on earth with Mercury retrograde? Oh, sorry, that's the wrong chart. With Mercury retrograde, um, why, you know, um, and um, under an eclipse and so on and so forth. But I have to tell you that, you know, I am, um, I'm a very, a shamanic astrologer and I dream the planets the more that I um, work with astrology and the more I work with shamanic practices in my astrology and I do this within my membership and my Venus retrograde classes and so on and so forth um, I the the planets speak to me in my dreams these days and you know um, I'm not saying that I'm always right but I quite often get very strong intuitions. And the minute that the coronation date was announced, I was like, oh, that's perfect. I looked at the chart, I looked at his chart, and I'll tell you why the connections are good. And I think it's um, going to be a successful reign. But I will say that that depends on your perspective too, of course, because you know, if you are an anti-monarchist, a successful reign for you would be one where he um, completely dismantles the monarchy. I can't say, say I think that's going to happen. 
Um, but I do think is he's going to um, modify it quite a lot, shall we say. He already did. Uh, believe it or not, the first coronation in 70 years was way scaled back, uh, was a third of the time of his mother's and um, and was probably cost in real terms uh, less money, even though the security probably had to be higher. But anyway, let's have a look at the crowning chart. The first thing is it's Leo rising. OK, and Leo is the sign of royalty. <laughs> OK, and, you know, it's it's just like uh, he is the king, um, you know, or he is the queen, whichever. Here is here is that your leader. Here I am. Um, I'm going to be your leader. And so that's the first thing, the rising sign. Then there's the top of the chart. Look at this 10th house. We've got this Taurus um, midheaven, which is uh, very embodied, uh, very um, um, associated with sustainability and security as well. And the north node is right at the top of the chart. This was destined. I don't have a problem with it being Mercury retrograde either. An awful lot of good things were created during and long lasting things were created during Mercury retrograde. So, you know, we've just got Mercury and in the 10th house as well, the most public place. The sun is the ruler of the ascendant in the 10th house. This is Vesta, which is the goddess of the hearth, keeping the fires burning. She's up there in the 10th house. This is all the most public place, all right? But we do also have Uranus in the 10th house, and that's kind of the um, the reformer, the rebellious, um, all that kind of thing. So I think it's got a very strong 10th house. We've also got Jupiter coming up to the ascendant and uh, to the midheaven, sorry, almost um, just out of sign right at the top there. Jupiter in the fire of Aries. I kind of think this is going to be, um, I think Charles is going to actually do a really good job. Um, and whether that means reforming or not, I do not know. But I I do think that he is um, destined to be king. And I have not a problem with this. Now, it was on an eclipse. It was on a Beltane eclipse. I actually find that quite astounding, to be honest. A lot of good things are also formed under eclipses. There's a lot of fear under eclipses. And this one, the sun was on the Beltane, the cross-quarter point. I find that a, a bit um, of a call back to um, kind of the more pagan roots, even though it was a very Christian service and he was anointed with oils because he will balance both the tradition and the non traditional in my opinion i like that the scorpio moon was in the fourth house you could see it on his face the weight of his ancestors the weight of what he was taking on with the crown in the fourth house the fourth house of him his inner self or the house of the people as well you could feel that he could um he was taking on the weight of responsibility for the people, which is the Scorpio in that house. And also for the expectation that the crown will probably release some of its um, influence, power, whatever. Tell you one other thing, though, that I really, really love about this coronation chart that I've not seen anybody mention yet. Well, there's two things. First, Venus. Venus is in Gemini in the 11th house. The 11th house is the house of the people, the friends, the the um, um, bigger message. Venus in Gemini. I think it's a very healing chart. I've seen a couple of other people say that, that it's a healing chart. Of course, Venus is the ruler of all this Taurus energy as well. I think he's here to create healing and to try and bring people together. But one other thing, 
series. You, you, those of you that have followed me for a long time know that I love series. Okay. That series is here in the second house. The second house being basically how you earn your money. <laughs> and series was about station direct. She was at her station point. She was stationed at a still point, which means very strong in the second house of how you earn your money or your self-esteem, your self-worth. And in Virgo, in the sign of service. And I just think that he is going to want to nourish and nurture his relationship with the people. Now, um, we are going to look at his chart in a minute, but I just think that's his desire. He's waited so long for all of this, right? You know, he was born in 1948. So um, he's going to be 75 this year in November. He was born on my, or my dad was born on his birthday. But, um, you know, he's a deep thinker and we'll look at his chart, as I said. But another reason why Ceres is stationing direct opposing Neptune and Neptune's in the eighth house. He's a this is going to be quite a connected and deeply spiritual kind of um, monarchy, I think, or kingship or whatever you want to call it. Um, and in the eighth house, that could mean uh, with Neptune in Pisces in the eighth house, that could um, involve dissolving some of the influence of the monarchy. He's already, um, I believe, scaled down the number of working royals and so on, which means that they won't be on uh, the um the purse with that gets the public money. Um, he's already donated a billion pounds. I mean, who has a billion pounds? But at least he donated it of his money to uh, to help people uh, in their need. And again, I'm not supporting him completely. If you want to get rid of the monarchy, great. I just think it's going to take a little bit of time. And I do think that he is a step towards that, or at least to changing things somewhat. Now, one thing I do want to mention, talking of this series Neptune, is that here we have the galactic center in the fifth house and opposing that Gemini. So we've got a mutable Grand Cross, which is very much about change. Also, you can just see the lines here to the nodes from Pallas Athena, who is the wise justice warrior, to the north node and square to Pluto. Pluto is squaring the nodes. He's going to change things in the fixed sign. He's going to change how the, the monarchy works, okay, and bring some wisdom into it. He's been thinking about this all his life. All right. And he knows people won't change. So that's my opinion on it. Um, you know, people who are fear mongering about this chart, I don't think there's any need to. It just I just thought, uh, yeah, they picked the good moment for this. And I do think they had an astrologer personally. OK, so we're going to look at his chart on its own, first of all, and then with the with the actual moment of the crowning. Now he's Leo rising too. Royalty. Um, but his son is in on the fifth house, which is very uh, much also about uh, kind of Leo energy as well, letting yourself shine. Or that kind of thing. But he's a Scorpio. He's very determined and very, very deep. Can be a bit pompous at times, Leo rising. Sure, can be very pompous. But he has Saturn in Virgo in that second house. Again, he's very much called to service. His own natal series is in Leo in the first house. So he's got a big heart. Uh, behind his gruffness and pomposity at times and his Scorpio um, privacy kind of energy. He's got a moon at zero um, 
Taurus conjunct his North Node. He was destined to take over from his mother, and that's in the 10th house, the most popular, uh, sorry, the most um, public place in the chart. But, mo but more excitingly, I want to show you what was happening the day of the crowning with his chart. He was having an almost exact nodal return. He just had his nodal return. This is a point of destiny. But look what else happens here. Chiron, air in Aries, is right on his own midheaven. He's come in to kind of heal some rifts here. To um, I'm hope I'm kind of really hoping that um, now he's got over his. Well, you never get over a death, but you know, moved beyond his mother's passing and the pressures of the coronation and taking this all this on. I think I'm hoping he's going to reach some reconciliation with Harry and Meghan, but we'll see, I guess. Um, all of that Taurus stuff is in his own 10th house at the moment of crowning. You know, the Mercury is up there as well. Jupiter is up there in his 10th house. This is good. You know, this is really good for him. Um, but look, the moon on the moment of the crowning was conjunct his son and conjunct his natal Chiron as well. And bringing in that Scorpio depth, you know, Scorpio is kind of the, the surgeon, is, is very much about um, those who do deep investigative psychological healing, therapeutic kind of energy as well. And he has that quality. He he kind of has that determination and that strength and will to do things. All right. Is there much else I want to say? Well, Ceres moves to hit the third house in his own chart. And remember, Ceres was stationing direct. And, um, and so that's the third house of the voice. I think, you know, he has to be careful. If, if you haven't watched The Crown, watch The Crown. Look how much uh, the uh, royals, how much power they actually have and how they're kind, kind of controlled as well. But I think he's um, he knows kind of how to um, manage that, shall we say. Then here's Pluto. Pluto in his sixth house of service is square to his natal moon now that both perhaps indicates the death of his mother that he would not be king without the loss of his mother but to my mind it also indicates profound emotional transformation as well I know I'm a very positive kind of astrologer I tend to not live in those fear-based things and he's going to die someday uh, but I think this is his destiny. I think it's meant to be. But I do think he's going to transform things in a big way. And we'll see. watch this space to see how he does. He's been waiting till, like I said, he's 74. He's going to be 75 on November the 14th. Um, and he's got his last years to make a difference here. I think there were a lot of things that were waiting until uh, Queen Elizabeth died. And now he's going to start bringing the change. So let's have a look. Let's watch what happens. But really, if you see any fear based astrologers going, why did he do it under eclipse? Why did they let him do the coronation under eclipse? I think being on a crowned on a Beltane eclipse is kind of powerful personally and that's my instinct so i hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you next time